Hello everyone, this is Indrajit Ganguly and welcome to your history class. Dear students, today I am going to start the chapter number 5 from the syllabus of class 10, the age of industrialization. Remember students, uh, due to the COVID-19 situation, uh, CBSC reduced the syllabus and you have only two chapters from history in the board examination that is chapter number 1 and chapter number 3. So I can say that it was, a biggest, it was the biggest relief for you. But remember students, the chapter 5, the age of industrialization can only be covered in the periodic test, that means the unit test, for the unit test. So, these chapter will not come in the uh, board examination, but this chapter is very important for the unit test, for the unit test examination. So, let us have a look on to the chapter number 5, the age of industrialization. Okay, from this chapter, you can understand that this chapter is basically about the process of industrialization and it is about the industrial revolution. Now the question is what is industrial revolution right. So we can say that industrial revolution is a process which transformed the agrarian handicraft industry to the machine made industry. We can also say that the industrial revolution replaced the handicap industry, the handicraft industry to the machine made industry. But before going to the discussion of the, uh, before going to the discussion of the industrial revolution and the, and the factors which led to the industrial revolution, we have to know the context of industrial revolution. But remember student, industrial revolution first of all occurred in England and it was started during the late 18th century. So, the British nation is the first nation where industrial revolution occurred first and there are several reasons are there. But before going on to the discussion about the industrial revolution, we have to know about the context of the industrial revolution. That means how the British nation was moving towards the industrial, uh, towards the industrial revolution and how the British nation became the superior industrial nation all in all over the, in, 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 in all over world. So, so, our first topic from this chapter that is before the industrial revolution. The historian described these, uh, the, the early phase of the industrial revolution as the proto-industrialization. So, our today's topic that is discuss, that is about the proto-industrialization. It is the, what is the meaning of proto? Proto means early or first. We can say it can be primitive. So, the early phase of industry, the British, the historians referred the, uh, the, the phase before the industrial revolution as the proto-industrialization. In this system, British merchants, they moved to the countryside and they offered money, poor peasants and artisans and persuaded them to uh, to manufacture for an international market. Now the question is what is international market? I think students you know that England had large number of colonies in different parts of the world in Asia, Africa and in America. Once Ravindranath Tagore said that British nation had never faced sunset. So if there is a sunset in America there will be sunrise in India. So you can understand that the, 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 uh, the, how the British nation expanded their colonies in different parts of the world. So, the British merchants offered the peasants and artisans to work from them and they provided and they provide cash advances to them. But as the British nation expanded and world of trade ex expanded, the British, the British uh, England captured lots of many colonies in different parts of the world. So obviously the demand for the international for, for so the demand for the international market increased. So therefore British merchants wanted to expand their production in town and different parts of England. But the British market could not want to expand their uh, expand their production in towns. They only have to live have to exist in the countryside. Why did so? Because in towns, in British towns, basically in London, Manchester, Yorkshire, Lancashire, in British towns, basically the trading guilds are very powerful. Now, the question is what is trading guilds? 
ट्रेडिंग गिल्स कैन बी सेट इट इज़ अ बिजनेस मैन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सपोज सपोज इन अ टाउन सेवन और एट बिजनेस मैन आर देयर एंड दे फॉर्म अप ऑन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन दे फॉर्म अप एंड गिल्ड एंड दे गॉट द मोनोपोली राइट्स फ्रॉम द ब्रिटिश मोनार्की फॉर दी ऑफ ऑफ द प्रोडक्शन सो दे आर फॉर वट एवर द प्रोडक्शन विल बी डन इन द टाउन दैट वॉज दैट वॉज सुपरवाइज बाय द गिल्ड्स एंड दे ऑल्सो कंट्रोल द प्राइजेस सो इट वॉज नॉट पॉसिबल फॉर द न्यू ब्रिटिश मर्चेंट्स टू एंटर इन टू द बिजनेस इन द टाउन बिकॉज इट वॉज मोनोपोलाइज बाई द बिजनेस मैन सो ऑब्वियसली दे हैव नो ऑप्शन दे मूव टू द कंट्री साइड एंड दे मस्ट डिपेंडेंट ऑन द पुअर पीजेंट एंड आर्टिशंस ऑफ द कंट्री साइड नाउ द क्वेश्चन इज आर द पीजेंट्स एंड आर्टिशंस रेडी टू वर्क फॉर देम ये स्टूडेंट एंड द आंसर इज ऑब्वियसली येस बिकॉज बिकॉज ऑफ द इनक्लोजर मूवमेंट open fields started disappeared and the peasants and what is uh, artisans they had to sustain their life from the small plots and these small plots could not fulfill their full could not fulfill the income uh, could not fulfill the could not fulfill for the whole family so they must th- so all the poor peasants and artisans they are thinking about alternative source of income okay so now open field is appear because the poor earlier poor peasants and artisans they dependent on the open fields because suppose whenever they required they could utilize these open fields for cultivation or they could utilize it for grazing their animal or for other purposes but as the open fields were took over by the government so they have no option and they had to depended on the small plots of the land and that could not enough for the income of the family so whenever the merchants provide them cash advances and persuaded them to produce for an international market they easily accepted the offer because these offer became the alternative source of income for them and also these offer supplemented their shrinking income so that's why the poor peasants and merchants the poor peasants and artisans they easily accepted the offer because suppose if they are doing cultivation in the morning then they could produce clothes in the evening so obviously they they find extra income so obviously a relation between towns and countryside was set up and it was a chain system just look and look onto it look into it basically the british merchants coming from the towns they provided cash advances to the poor peasants and artisans who lived in the countryside and in this system in the proto industrialized system all of the family the all the family of the poor peasants and artisans involved in this system and they worked under the merchants all the family okay the whole family worked under this system basically spinning dyeing and spinning weaving and dyeing process was done by these poor peasants and artisans in the countryside clear so okay, remember spinning was done by one family weaving was done by one family and dyeing was done by another family so spinning weaving and dyeing was completed in the countryside after that after this process the product moved to the town area for finishing of the products basically towns are the finishing of these finishing was the place for the finishing products london and remember students london is the finishing center so after the finishing of the products basically the merchants sold them to the international market so this is about the proto industrial proto industrial system okay this is this is about the early phase of the industrial revolution in my next class i will i will discuss with you how the introduction of new technology and machine made industry transform the british economy and how did it affect the lives of the uh, british workers and peasantry thank you and have a nice day